Hi, get ready for some dick jokes, both Robin and Todd. Andrew, and this is Katie's Toys. If you done thought I wasn't gonna do superpowers, you're incorrect. However, I have been struggling on how to approach it because the fact of the matter is, then as now, we have essentially the entire DC Universe catalog of women to do, and I'm not prepared to do that. I don't got that kind of bandwidth to, you know, run through everything. So I feel like we're gonna do a few. They're gonna be the more popular characters. They're gonna be the more, you know, uh, best-selling characters. They're gonna be mostly characters based around the 80s style guide, which, uh, you know, Superpowers itself is very, like, heavily influenced from. So we're doing it. This is the first one. And accordingly, we're gonna do some of my favorites, that being the Teen Titans. The Teen Titans originally uh, came together in 1964. They were part of a, a backstory in The Brave and the Bold. They were essentially a, a junior Justice League of, you know, the sidekick characters getting together. The one girl in the group was Wonder Girl, and this was very confusing, which is a theme we're gonna hear a lot from Wonder Girl going forward. When Wonder Girl joined the team, she was also suddenly absent from the Wonder Woman book. The problem being, Wonder Girl was Wonder Woman in the same way that Superboy was Superman, only younger. This Wonder Girl was sort of out of continuity, maybe DH from Hippolyta. She was very confusing. And the fact that she was in Teen Titans meant that the actual writers for Teen Titans didn't really pay attention and thought she was a separate character. And this went on for almost two years before it was definitively said, this is a new character, her name's Donna Troy, we're gonna give her a new origin. I'm not getting into her origin, it's conflicting and confusing and ever-changing and still is. I mean, it's never locked down. It's never something you want to spend much time on. You can go do your own research if you need to, but beware. Although the Teen Titans tried to market themselves as like hip and young and cool, they weren't. They were trying way too hard and they were a little too golly gee willikers about the whole thing. Uh, they tried to get a little edgy by the end of their comic series originally, but you know, teenagers of the 60s, had their own issues. So, I mean, these two much tryhards were just not, you know, not clicking with them. There was an attempt at a revival in the 1970s, but it wasn't until 1980 that Marv Wolfman and George Perez, both legendary creators now, largely because of this, launched the all new Teen Titans. This included a few founding members like Robin and Wonder Girl, but introduced brand new characters like Beast Boy, Cyborg, and Raven and Starfire, who we're talking about today. Of the three, Starfire is probably my favorite. She was a uh, very new to earth, orange alien, fiery hair, green fire powers. Very naive, very sweet, very, you know, kind of fresh off the boat, if, to point a phrase. She wanted to, you know, sort of experience earth and had this very kind of like wide-eyed wonderment about it. That said, she came from an alien planet where she was a princess who, you know, escaped the planet being conquered. She was sold into sex slavery, like really, really chipper stuff. So dark backstory, fun character, very fiery, very exciting, uh, and very sexy, which we'll get back to. On the flip side, Raven is a character I could never really peg down. She was uh, a daughter of Trigon, a demon. He, she was, you know, supposed to be a key for his, you know, ruling of the earth. Being a rebellious teen, she was like, no dad, I'm not doing that. And she, you know, was supposedly very powerful. She had her own, you know, kind of Phoenix moment, um, like from the X-Men. She, you know, there's always this like danger bubbling underneath her and accordingly she kept her emotions very much in check. That said, I mean, Empath is such a chick power. I mean, she was Counselor Troy before Counselor Troy was a thing. It's sort of, you know, she could do whatever the plot needed her to do. So. Great design, but I never really responded well to the character myself. These three very different characters and character traits were complementary and conflicting. This was actually baked into Wolfman's design for them. The boys, like the girls, sort of covered the entire emotional spectrum. So on one side, you had Starfire, who was like fiery and explosive and hot-tempered. On the other, you had Raven, who was very measured and calm and had to sort of maintain that. In the middle was Wonder Girl, who was very much kind of the, the big sister type, much like Robin and Nightwing beside her. And the two of them were very much, you know, the leaders, or, you know, he was the leader, she was the co-leader. Um, she definitely was sort of, you know, the, the bridge between the two. 
For animation, there was a Hanna-Barbera cartoon in the 60s about the original crew. It, uh, it you know, it, it had a few episodes, it was fine. No one really talks about it. No one even knows it's there half the time. So not much to talk about there. There was, again, a, seemingly an attempt to make a new one out of the Super Friends. Uh, there were some, you know, character designs made. Uh, they were recycled for a drug commercial, which was all the rage in the 80s. I mean, it's whatever. Um, but I mean, put a pin in this commercial because there's some design choices here that may be important later. Now for the toy line in question, it's the Superpowers Collection by Kenner. It first came out in 1984. To this day, it is still one of my absolute favorite toy lines ever. It very much borrowed from like said before, the style guide, which in my head to this day is still DC. When I think of the DC characters, I think of that and I think of the superpowers. They all had superpower features. They weren't great, personally, uh, but the line was beloved. That said, the first wave really blew their load when it came to, you know, A-listers. So by the time, you know, wave two came around, there were some choices. And again, you can go find some videos on those choices. They are truly, truly baffling. By the time they course corrected for wave three, the damage was done. People lost interest. Um, and there was, you know, certain plans for wave for, you know, four, five, beyond. Uh, we've seen lists, we've seen some contradictory lists, we've seen a lot of information about this. Teen Titans isn't about that specifically, and we'll get about those characters some other time. Kenner had sort of considered a Teen Titans either offshoot or subline or kind of some kind of spin-off from superpowers. Um, the only character we saw in that was Wonder Girl, and we saw her twice, in fact. There was a Teen Titans place that they had proposed. She was front and center in that art. And likewise, there were some sort of like almost what looked like, you know, cardboard standees. Uh, and again, she was, you know, front and center. The other two, as much as I love them, as much as, you know, you could not do a line without them, had some problems. The less problematic of the two would be Raven. It's really more of a measure of design. Raven had a very interesting, dark look, uh, maybe a little witchcrafty, which would be problematic for, you know, 80s moms. Um, the problem really is that her dress and her cape, her cape kind of tended to go up in this big, like, bevel. And likewise, the dress was, you know, sort of a slit dress part of the costume. These things are kind of, you know, in the superpower style, I'm not sure how they would have done that. Customizers have tried many years to do that. I mean, I think probably the easiest thing to do would be kind of the Star Wars model, where you just sort of make the dress and cut a hole in the middle and make them legs. It's uh, it's not great, but it's probably the best option for this character specifically. Starfire, however, is a whole other can of worms. She is sex, and I mean that very truly. I mean, the character was someone who learned English by kissing Robin. That's how she learned English. I mean, it's just, you know, it's it's kind of baked into her chemistry. Um, furthermore, I mean, she was a very important part of turning Dick Grayson from the boy wonder into Nightwing, into a young man. The two of them were, you know, seen in bed, naked, in issues. I mean, between, you know, her sexiness and the costume, it's a lot of sexiness. It's too much sexiness for a toy aisle. I mean, then, as now even. I mean, that costume was truly shocking. The important thing to bear in mind, however, is there was that Hanna-Barbera cartoon slash drug commercial where she was, you know, wearing about as much as Wonder Woman was. So there's a possibility there that, you know, that animation was sort of made in tandem with a figure in mind. All of this is to say that, you know, superpowers, we only got Wonder Woman, Donna Troy was maybe sort of in the mix, but by and large, you know, we've been sort of without since. And let's talk about it. This final verdict is a bit of a weird one. So in terms of just getting action figures of these characters, there's no shortage. Uh, Wonder Girl, Starfire, Raven, I mean, they've been done countless times in countless different, you know, uh, iterations and countless different toy lines, companies. They, you know, if you just want to figure out them, there's plenty of them out there. You're fine. Um, likewise, in animation, they did do quite well since, you know, the Superpowers line. The most notable would be the 2003 Teen Titans series, as well as the spin-off series Teen Titans Go, which was much more focused on younger, you know, viewers. Uh, Wonder Girl 
It didn't really make an appearance there, but Starfire and Raven particularly really took off and uh, the entire cast really, for the first time, became part of the cultural zeitgeist. I mean, kids were raised on this. Kids love this. They, you know, found success in TV that they once had in comics. And it's really, you know, been a, a great journey to the point that, you know, the kids who were raised on Teen Titans, the cartoon series, grew up and had to endure a live action show um, that I'm not really gonna talk about. But again, those characters were there. That said, you all know me and you know that I love when we can get new figures in a vintage style to supplement your vintage collection. Uh, this happens a lot with Star Wars, it's happened with Ghostbusters, it's happened with you know Transformers. That said, there's a bit of a Todd problem here. When McFarland Toys got the DC license, uh, at least sort of the more adult collectible license, uh, they kind of started off with the multiverse line, which is its own beast. Out of nowhere, however, they did start making superpowers. Very much, you know, with the same packaging, kind of the same style. The first wave was more modern designs, uh, not great sculpts, they were too tall. That said, in the, you know, all the waves since, they've sort of started to make some course corrections and we're starting to see them a little shorter and a little more in line with the vintage collection. They don't have super features this time. They, you know, uh, they're, pretty cheap and cheerful, frankly, they're not bad, but I mean, um, there's been one running joke from the beginning that there's no women. There is Wonder Woman. They have made Wonder Woman, they have repainted Wonder Woman, they've repainted her again. It's also not great, but they've done Wonder Woman to death. The joke on every live stream, on every review, on any time whispers in a dark alley about superpowers occur, Todd don't like making women's. This all came to a head when Todd McFarlane himself had an interview with YouTuber and all-around lovely person, Chartimus Prime. In the interview, he really put his foot in his mouth and it was just sort of bemoaning how, you know, female figures are, are terrible and he doesn't want to make them. And it sort of came to this crescendo of grossness when he said that little boys would be disappointed if they got a female figure and it would lead them towards becoming a serial killer. It's gross. It's sexist. It's disgusting. It's a bygone era. It is so vile, and I do not want to get into it every single video about the series, but it needs to be said. And I am not an interview or review type channel, so I have no concerns about not getting an interview with Todd. That said, he's not welcome. Just gross. Just the worst. Now, have I purchased some superpowers like Booster Gold or you know Blue Beetle since? Yeah, so. Who's the real monster here? All that said, every single wave that comes out, there is sort of the discussion where the lady's at. And there's many to do. And with the line as old to the tooth as it is currently, time's a ticking. So there's a few. And I'm going to concentrate on those few that probably should be done in the meantime. Whether Todd will allow it or not, we'll see. But um, for the Teen Titans specifically, that would really fill in a great corner of, you know, the superpowers line. Um, that said, there are other options. In 2018, Funko made a very short one-wave wonder of the new Teen Titans, based very specifically on, you know, the 80s style guide, on the way they looked in their, you know, most popular series. Um, they're great. They made Starfire and Raven, and they really would and could and should fit in with your superpowers. The problem being they're a little short. Uh, Raven you could probably get away with, but Starfire, particularly next to Robin or Wonder Woman, way too short. Starfire is kind of considered a little on the tall side, so you could fudge it in. And they are, you know, real action figures, good paint. Like, they're, they're, they're good, <laughs> but um, I think your best option if you are looking to, you know, fill in the ranks of your classic collection, or frankly, even the new one, Thunder McFarlane. Customizers are the way to go, and there's uh, frankly too many to list, I mean, and which is a good thing. Um, they are customs, they're not official, they're, you know, there's maybe some paint scratching you have to be concerned about, they're probably a little more on the pricey side, but I've gotten a few over the years, um, and I just, I could not be happier just to have really and truly a fleshed out DC universe on my shelf. So that's it for today with Superpowers and Teen Titans. We'll be returning for, you know, Justice Leaguers, villains, girlfriend characters, all of it. We're going to go through 
quite a few that appeared in the style guide and, you know, should have been in the Supercars collection originally, most certainly should now. I don't want to get into the Todd thing every time. I might, we'll see. Um, but that said, thank you for watching. Thank you for hearing my rant. If you like this video, please like it, comment, share, subscribe, all those YouTube things, and I will see you next time on MIA 80s Olivia's.